Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today, I would like to tell you about the Uneda Lemma, the Uneda Embedding, whatever you want to call it, kind of the, really one of the cornerstones of, let's say, classical category theory. Um, it's not so easy to explain. I'm trying to do my best. In some sense, if you understand the question, you will understand the proof. I'm not going to show you the proof anyway. So it's a little bit tricky to explain. And I'm definitely a brute. So I'm <laughs> sorry for that, by the way. So I'm taking the uh, approach to shoot on sight, to explain it in a slightly, maybe slightly strange way. I uh, hope you will like it. So let's have a look at kind of, in my opinion, the main idea behind the Yoneda Lemma. And surprise, surprise, what I would like to do is I would like to shoot on gold foils. So that's a very classical experiment, which I hope you have seen. Otherwise, this video might not be for you. Otherwise, you definitely should Google right now go Rutherford's gold uh, foil experiment. It's one of the cornerstone experiments, the landmark experiments in kind of quantum theory, if you want. Um, it basically is the following idea. You have a gold foil and you just take gold because it has some uh, very nice chemical properties. You can basically take any material, just gold, which just works very well in the experimental setup. We kind of ignore that there's gold. Uh, but basically you want to study the atomic structure of, well, whatever you want to study, let's say gold, as I said, and how can you do that? It's not so simple to do. And the idea is you just shoot at it. You just shoot at it often enough um, in this case, with some kind of radioactive particles, whatever, and you kind of uh, measure uh, what happens to, to when you shoot particles at your gold foil. So shooting at things is usually a very good strategy. I haven't checked. I should have probably before. But if you would Google now or just search on YouTube for people shooting on titanium plates, just with a real gun, I mean, and then maybe compare it to shooting with a gun on iron, iron or something like that. Who knows? I'm pretty sure someone has done that on YouTube. By now, what is not on YouTube, right? Um, it's actually not so such a bad idea. It just sounds a little bit crazy to shoot on titanium plates. But anyway, um, it's kind of the same idea. So you can you can study an object by throwing things at it, right? Kind of that's the real interpreted idea here. So I want to learn about X, uh, of course. And I want to do it by shooting at it, whatever shooting means. And the same idea works actually in mathematics in general and in category theory in, in, in particular. So you can study an object by not really looking at the object, but by rather looking at, let's say, morphisms to that object or from that object, something like that. And I like to think about the Yoneda lemma as being the gold foil experiment of category theory. Um, yeah, so maybe let's have a look at a more category flavored example. So there's a certain type of functors, which I haven't addressed yet, which are really nice, they're home functors. They're a little bit, uh, uh, there's some slight catch here, so kind of all arrows turn around, there would be ops at every, everywhere, it's just very annoying. You can kind of ignore it, but I hope I got it correct, I probably didn't. Um, anyway, so the home functor is this really nice idea that you can just go from any category to set by using this thing here. So home from uh, something to X, right? So this gives you a set. So if you would feed in whatever, so home C for your favorite object, Y, uh, you will get a set. So this is a set, so this lives here, right? So here you go, this lives here. Same for home, home Z uh, from X. Uh, the, the point here, as I said, it's a little bit annoying that everything ends of turns around. So you start here with C op, because what is what is association on objects going to do? Well, let's say you have fear an object, uh, sorry, on arrows is going to do. Let's say you have fear an arrow. This would be a G from Y to X, and you want to get whatever something from Z to X. Um, so that's what you kind of want to do, and you kind of want to have a composition here. So how does it work? Well, you can use F, which goes from Z to Y. And then you can post compose it with G to go to X and you get a, your map from Z to X. That's why on this side, actually F goes in the opposite direction. So strictly speaking, I'm talking about the opposite category. Here. Ignore that. Anyway, the home functor, pretty cool functor, pretty nice actually works in general. Just um, shoot at X. That's what we are doing here, right? I just take the, the arrows 
from anything to X. And that's kind of my evaluation on, uh, on this factor. Those so, 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 so are called home factors. There are various variations of those. Uh, for example, I have just decided to fit X in the second component uh, of the home functor. So it's my blank X. You can also think of an X blank, but uh, let's, let's not worry about that right now. Let's just take this as a definition of a home functor. Right? It, this is really the, sh the gold foil experiment in category. It's a home functor in some sense. You want to learn something about X and you study home from blank to X. Right? So kind of the gold foil experiment. And that's really what you do. So the Junida perspective, the Junida perspective is not quite Junida lemma. We'll see that in a second, is the gold foil experiment of category theory. It's really saying that everything you want to know in huge quotation marks is encoded in uh, the set of whatever you shoot at X. Right? So everything you kind of kind of kind of, kind of get a code here is kind of encoded on the other side. There's a nice duality or a nice correspondence going from left to right. Here's an example, for example, you could check something like uh, X isomorphic to Y, if and only if uh, the home functor is S functor is good. For example, it's kind of a nice perspective, right? The gold foil experiment of category theory in this Juneda perspective says, everything you want to know about X is encoded in shooting at X, right? Everything you know want to know about gold is included in kind of shooting rays uh, at gold foils. In some sense, at least. So let's have a look actually at the precise statement. I, by the way, I, as I said, I hope you like this analogy of using the gold foil. Um, anyway, so the, the Junior lemma itself kind of generalizes this observation. Um, by the way, here's a proof. I won't go too much into details, but if you stop the, uh, the video, you can actually construct, reconstruct the proof just from this very nice picture, which I stole um, from a nice site that is linked in the description. Anyway. So the Junida lemma, in some sense, actually I'm lying here. It's not really the gold foil experiment. This is a generalization of the gold foil experiment. Anyway, so it says the following. For any functor, there's some op involved. Ignore the op from C to Z. And any x, the natural transformations between the home functor and f are bijections with a very, very nice and small set. So they really, well, the principal at least controllable set, namely but f in evaluating it with x. That sounds very abstract. I will make it more concrete in a second on the next slide using your data embedding. The only thing I would like to stress here is that this is really this idea of um, what I had on the last slide. And this is a really cool perspective because basically what it says is that a priori natural transformations from something to something from a pretty com complicated functor to a pretty complicated functor, hmm, God knows, it could be massive. Um, but your data says it's actually not so bad. So all, all, everything you ever want to know about those natural transformation is kind of encoded in something very small in the object f of x, right? So you kind of know everything you want to know about the home functor in this case, just by looking at f on x, f of x. And of course, vice versa, you know everything about f on x by looking at the home functor, right? This is kind of this gold for a perspective of your data. So this is very abstract, but I hope <laughs> you keep the gold for experiment in mind. It kind of makes sense. And the Yoneda embedding, so here's really, an, again, a nice picture of how they are all related, uh, linked in the description, as I said. So kind of the, the same nice site. And the Yoneda embedding is a little bit easier to think about than the Yoneda uh, lemma itself. Um, so I would like to highlight that a little bit. Um, so just my notation here that I already explained that functors form a category. So let's say C, to C comma set in this uh, angular brackets here or whatever something like this. That's a category of functors from C to Z. I could do that for C to D, but let's just say it was C to Z. And the theorem, the Yoneda embedding theorem, one of my favorite theorems actually in category theory, it's kind of very cute. It's really even generalizing this idea of the goal for a step further. It's not like you can just study objects by looking at kind of everything you can shoot at them. You could study whole categories by just looking at, at everything you can shoot at them, right? So um, there's an embedding, so strictly speaking, it's the following statement, there's an embedding of, you can forget the op, there's embedding of C, of C to its functors, right? So C is a subcategory of its functors to set, right? You can study C by looking at functors to set, right? That's kind of 
in fact, as to set, is like a gold foil experiment. It's strictly speaking an opposite gold foil experiment, if you want, because I'm looking for factors from C to something, not from something to C. But okay, let's let's ignore that. The point is uh, C is determined by um, this set of functors, right? So you can study a category by looking at functors. In some sense, that's exactly what we want to hear uh, from the perspective or from the philosophy of category theory, because functors should be more important than categories. And here you go. You can just, in some senses, is saying you can forget about categories because everything is encoded in functors anyway. Uh, whatever. So let me wrap up. So your Neda lemma is, I think, at least in my mind, so for me that works pretty well, is this gold foil experiment in mathematics. That everything is determined by shooting enough things at it. Right? Everything is determined by looking at home functors. Um, everything is determined by looking at functors. It's kind of this idea of the Neda lemma, the so Neda embedding at the end. Um, as I said, I really hope you like this analogy which helped me a lot to kind of wrap my head around what the Uneda lemma is, because it, in, in the end, it's a pretty abstract statement. But it's kind of, as I said, kind of a more general philosophy anyway, kind of just go for it. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope to see you next time.